You know, sometimes in athletics, we forget. We forget just how great somebody is as time passes on. I had the great uh, fortune, and I think Coach Bowden would share in this thought, we had great fortune to coach Charlie Ward. And Charlie, I, I believe this is not an overstatement. We will never see another athlete do what Charlie Ward did. See, I think we forget sometimes, but think about it. Who is ever going to win the Heisman Trophy, be drafted in the first round of the NBA, and play that many years, get drafted in baseball, but I have to say I'm not buying the tennis. <laughs> I'm not buying that. But think about that for a moment. And because time passes, we can forget about what's been accomplished. And I know everyone always speaks about how quiet Charlie is. But I was able to coach him for a decade, and he spoke loud and clear every day with his actions. You know, Charlie was under, because of the way he lived his life and his beliefs, he was under greater scrutiny than most anybody else. Because everyone was always looking for the chinks in the armor and any sign of hypocrisy. And I'll say this, I, I'm not saying that Charlie Ward was perfect, but I'll, I'll match his life up with what he says and what he does with anyone on this earth. I was amazed at his everyday consistency. You got the same guy every day, win or lose. It never changed. And I saw a true perseverance and true grit that I grew to admire. And the two things that stood out for me after all those experiences that I've had with Charlie, great wins, horrible losses, fights, won. We didn't lose too many fights. But, um, was two things. The first was Charlie was a rookie playing for Pat Riley, and I was an assistant coach. And we had two rookies that year. We had Monty Williams, who's now the head coach of the New Orleans Hornets. And if you see him now, he looks the same. He's in great shape. 6'8", 240, stallion. And little Charlie, who hadn't been playing much basketball because he'd played football for so long. And Coach Riley, it was a different time, a different throwback era. He made him run the gauntlet. Okay? And we had some mean, nasty guys on our team. And I didn't know Charlie that well, but he lined up. Coach Riley lined these two guys, uh, these, our teams up on two sides. Imagine about three feet apart, put Monty Williams and then Charlie. And they had to run through the gauntlet. And the players could deliver whatever blow they wanted to the guys running through. Like a hazy. I don't know if that's allowable anymore. But... With the New York Knicks, everything was fine. So, uh, so the, Monty Williams, 6'8", 240s first. And we had uh, some big guys. Anthony Mason, Charles Oakley, Patrick Ewing. And those were our sane guys. Then we had some, some lunatics. So Monty Williams goes first. And here he comes. He's running through as fast as he can to try to minimize the damage to his body. And these guys are unloading on him. I mean, forearm shivers. You know, it was, it was brutal. I was just sitting back there like, we're going to lose this guy. Well, anyway, he finally staggers out of this gauntlet, not bloodied, but certainly dazed. And I'm looking back at poor little Charlie like, oh, this guy, he's going to get it. So here he comes, and if you know him at all, it was so typical as I got to know him better. He comes high-stepping through there. His legs were pumping, and they were hitting him hard, and he didn't move. And he was through there, and he just like flipped the, you know, flipped the basketball to the next guy like it was nothing. And that's the poise that he showed every day. And the second thing I remember so much about him 
was, uh, somebody asked me to, to describe him as a guy and as someone to coach, and I said, listen, this is Charlie Ward. I can't describe it any better. He's going to pray for you before the game. He's going to rip your heart out, out at, during the game. And he's going to pat you on the butt after he beats you after the game. And that's Charlie as an athlete. And there was a guy that I worked with long ago named Tom Thibodeau, who's now the head coach of the Chicago uh, Bulls. And he's had the greatest, we were in a meeting one time about talking about our team back in New York. And he had the greatest thing that I ever, compliment that I ever heard given from a coach to a player. And he said, Charlie's athletic epithet will be maybe outplayed, but never outcompeted. And I really felt like that summarized who Charlie Ward was as an athlete. But more amazing to me than what he's done athletically is the path he's on now. After he was uh, done with the Rockets due to injury, he was on our coaching staff. And maybe that's why we got fired, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure. But anyway, that's a, that's a, that's a, but he was, he was on the path to being an NBA head coach. And out of the, what seemingly to the blue to me, but not for him, he came in and said he wanted to change his life's direction from a professional standpoint. He wanted to go to Westbury Christian to teach, coach, but most of all, mentor. And I was so impressed with someone who had been in the limelight for so long and really was on the path to be an NBA head coach to take a step back and do what he felt was right for himself and his family. And what he's accomplished here in a short period of time is really become a role model that everyone and every player can emulate. And no one can do it, no one can coach without a strong family behind you. And he's uh, fortunate tonight to have here his mom and dad, Charlie Ward Sr. If you guys could stand up, please, Mr. and Mrs. Ward. Mr. Ward was a great coach in his own right and only second-guessed me every other game that I had, Charlie. Um, and then Charlie's wife, Tanja, and the kids, Caleb, Hope, and Joshua. Stand up, please. And I just want to... Uh, before Charlie comes up and, and talks, uh, I'm, I'm thankful. I, I, I love this guy. I love what he stands for. I love how he, he, he competed. I love that he overlooked my many faults. Uh, and because uh, I wasn't always like Coach Bowden, a dad gummit guy. Um, so I, 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 uh, I really appreciate, you know, um, all he's done for me and I am so thankful for his friendship and his kindness and, uh, you know, the sense of brotherhood that I have with him. And so I think we should give it up long and loud for Charlie Ward. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coach Van Gundy, he's um, <laughs> funny. He's a funny guy. Uh, <clears throat> that's uh, the guy that I didn't know when I was playing. Uh, but after, once I started coaching with him, I started to understand a little bit. He has a lot of jokes. And uh, he is... Uh, a very good guy. I appreciate um, him very much because he was the one that kind of helped me get to the point where I needed to be to be successful in the NBA. And every, every morning, um, even the mornings that I didn't want to get up to go and work out, he made sure that 
I'm, uh, we were there uh, working out, developing our skills. So my longevity in the NBA is directly due to him. And I'm very grateful for that. And he also gave me my first opportunity in coaching. So I owe a lot to Coach Van Gundy. Um, I'll, before I start, I'd like to thank, thank some of the uh, sponsors um, on the back of your programs. If you have a program, I think everyone has a program. I'd like to, for you all to recognize the sponsors on the back, but I would just like to recognize a few of them. The uh, Braze, Oaks, Braze Oaks Management District, we appreciate your support um, very much. Let's give them a hand. Um, the Meyer Foundation um, Incorporated, uh, let's give them a hand as well. Uh, two of our own family members, um, Colin and Esther Chance. And Mr. Tony McCorvey and his family, we appreciate your support. And you can read the rest of them. Uh, we appreciate everyone who supported our event uh, this year. And um, it's definitely something that the facility is definitely something that we're definitely looking forward to being a part of and being here um, to be able to serve our community and also have a place to call home. I know for football and track and baseball and softball and soccer, and then our school get an opportunity to come over here. And I know Coach Ferris is definitely looking forward to coming to play on the, the, uh, the turf field and all those things. So we definitely appreciate you all being here. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, the next gentleman who um, was very instrumental in you know, my legacy, uh, being able to obtain uh, my degree at Florida State. And I just want to share uh, a few things. I know uh, I've talked to a few people, and people know my story um, about playing at Florida State. Uh, but it was one gentleman that had to convince Coach Bowden that um, I was worthy of an opportunity or a scholarship uh, to play at Florida State. Uh, he's no longer with us. He passed away um, a while ago, uh, but it's Coach Wayne McDuffie. And Coach Mac, Coach Mac is what we called him. Um, he was more of a drill sergeant type guy. Um, he didn't wear socks with his uh, slippers. Um, that's kind of how we knew him. And he had a voice that he heard a very long way. By the way, Coach Van Gunnen, some of the guys – some of my players may differ with you about me being quiet, because uh, I, sometimes I get on them pretty good. Uh, but Coach Matt was a guy who did a lot for me in getting me into Florida State, and I appreciate Coach Bowden uh, giving me an opportunity um, because he didn't have to. And it was definitely a blessing for me to be able to go to Florida State, and I trusted him because he was the only one out of the coaches or schools that recruited me that had history on his side about allowing guys to participate in multiple sports. And those two sports were the sports that I was interested in. Uh, one of the things that he shared with me I had to do was I must have a certain GPA my first year in school in order for me to play, ba play basketball. And that was my only criteria to be able to make that happen. So it was on me. It was on me to make it happen. And just like my parents taught me, you got to make sure you get your academics before you do anything athletic. And he kept his word. And I'm very grateful that he did because it gave me an opportunity to have options. And I just want to give you a little brief uh, history. Coach Bowden has coached young men in seven decades. He became the second win in his coach in major college football history. Coach got at Florida State University to more than 300 victories. That's 300? 
Oh, it should be 400, right, coach? Yeah, 411. He'll make, he'll make that known. It should be 411. They didn't count a couple. And they took some away. They tried to take some away, too. So we're going to count all of them. Um, he had two national championships, 12 ACC conference titles. He finished in the top five in the country in 14 straight years, which probably won't ever be done again, um, and led the Seminoles to bowl games in 28 consecutive seasons during his 34-year tenure. The patriot of college football's most famous coaching family, Byron remains heavily involved in fellowship of Christian athletes. Byron was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2006, and he and his wife, Ann, I have been married for 62 years. That is. That's amazing. So your kids have no reason not to be successful in marriage. So just like Taj and I have no reason we can't be successful because our parents have been married for 40, my dad and mom been married for 47 years, and her parents been married 40 plus years before my father-in-law passed, so um, there's no excuses for us. Um, and Coach and his wife live in Tallahassee um, part of the time, and the rest of the time they're in Panama City, and Coach is all over the country traveling and speaking, and very thankful that he uh, has given up his time to come and be honored uh, by us. So. Without further ado, I'd like to bring up Coach Bobby Bowden. to present on behalf of our family, I'd like to present this uh, token of appreciation to Coach Bowden. I'd like to bring up my wife and two of the three kids. The other one is in the back, <laughs> Joshua. It's Caleb, Hope, my wife, Tanja. Um, it says, Westbury Christian School honors uh, Coach Bobby Bowden as the second recipient of the Charlie Ward Tribute of Excellence, October 16, 2011, Houston, Texas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure if you, can, if you want to hear you. Can. 